Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. Did the same thing over and over and over again. I began to find out after we started having our personal talks that he was a frightened, terrorized man, afraid of everything around him, hated everybody. He didn't have love for anybody. Two words finally changed the tone of the interrogation. I said, Joe, I'm going to tell you one word, and I want you to give me the other. If you don't give it to me, I said, we're finished. I said, Cosa? He says, Cosa Nostra. You know, you know about it. I said, yes, Joe, we know about it. I said, so what do you want from me? What I want from you is what you can tell me about Cosa Nostra. You belong to it? Yes, I don't. You tell me what you know. And that started it. Flynn had taken a guess. He'd heard wiretaps referring to Cosa Nostra, but he and his fellow agents weren't sure what it meant. A year later, in September 1963, Valachi appeared before the Senate Subcommittee on Investigation, headed by the senior senator from Arkansas, John McClellan. The hearings and Valachi's testimony were televised live. Our first witness today, Joseph Valachi, who is presently in the custody of federal officials serving a sentence for upon convictions had in our courts. He seemed to be singularly unimpressed with the fact that it was the Senate. There is a sense in which I don't think he realized the significance of what he was doing. He was just doing it. The mob had existed in its modern form in the United States for more than 30 years. Valachi had been a member for its entire history. Now he was coming forward when the mob's power was flagging. Bosses were being sent to jail, and mobsters with questionable loyalties were able to buy their way in. The mafia was only a remnant of its former glory. While alternately sucking lemons and chain smoking, Valachi laid out all the family's business, which he named for the first time. He called it Our Thing. For two weeks, he would tell his story in encyclopedic detail, alternately shocking and mesmerizing the viewing public with their first glimpse of this violent, secret society. Grabbed my hand and he gave me a kiss. This is a suspicious kiss. The kiss of death. 59-year-old Joe Valachi had been a loyal soldier in the Mafia for more than 30 years, but in 1963, under the threat of a death sentence for first-degree murder, he betrayed his oath of silence in the most public way possible in front of a Senate subcommittee on national... Who was the boss of the family that you belonged to in Casa Nostra? Vito Genovese. Vito Genovese, Genovese. was the boss. Right. Was he also... His performance was mesmerizing. Until Valachi, the public had never heard an insider's account of the mob. Television now radically changes everything. We got television of a mobster for the first time, 30 years, saying, I'm a member of an organization. It's called Cosa Nostra. It has 20 some odd families, it has five in New York. Here's the boss. It was an incredible intelligence breakthrough, and it was good theater. According to Valachi, he chose to testify for one reason. First of all, I want revenge. That's right. Uh, as the senator put it before, what did I get out of it? What'd you get out of it? Nothing but misery. He cracks jokes, laughs at uh, law enforcement, laughs at the mob, even laughs at times at himself. Nothing else. Is it a tragedy? Is it a comedy? It's a tragic comedy. Well, he had the knife and the gun on the table. I repeated some words he told me, but I only could explain what he meant. I could repeat the words, but they were in Sicilian. You repeated, but you didn't understand what they meant. Right. He went on to explain that you lived by the gun and by the knife, and you died by the gun and by the knife. He recites the bloodiest of bloody murders, 
Uh, he lets us know that he has been a part of a world that is cruel and evil and corrupt and venal and vicious. When you said you'd find him, what did you mean by that? I uh, get him. They can't find him means they can't find him to shoot him. So uh, I said I'll find him. What does that mean in your, in your terms? Did you, did that well, mean I, that I, you I, were I, agreeing yourself to kill him? Oh, yes, Senator. When you were chosen for this, uh, for this job, did you have any choice? Is this something you had to do when you were asked to do it? Well, uh, you see, now, a thought like that never even enters, enters our mind. With the spotlight on him and those senators sitting up there behind that long desk in that red velvet room, in his own mind, he was a hero, but he also saw himself as a traitor. As a 59-year-old grandfather, Joe Valachi was fighting to survive, and the only thing he had to trade was information. Then he, he, he picks your finger. Who, who? The Godfather. He Makes a little blood come out. In other words, that's the express the blood relation. Supposed to be like brothers. Valachi's life had been a struggle since the day he was born, September 22, 1904, in the Italian ghetto of East Harlem, New York. His parents, Marie and Dominic Valachi, had arrived from Naples, Italy, enticed by the promise of the American dream. His family's immigration experience was in some ways the first betrayal that Joe lived through. When they stepped off the boat on Ellis Island, they realized that was not the dream. What happened was they were handed a shovel and told, you got a job, uh, 10 hours a day digging ditches six days a week for five cents an hour. Joe was the second oldest of his parents' six children. He was part of a big family, lots of brothers and sisters. Lots of them died uh, either at childbirth or uh, in the early days after. Uh, uh, mother and father uh, were uh, uneducated. Uh, you know, you could say he was a typical resident of East Harlem in the early 1900s. Typical in that he and his family were desperately poor and at the mercy of violent gangs that controlled street life in East Harlem's Italian community. When Joe's father did have work, he was harassed by a forerunner of the Italian mob, the Black Hand. Joe's dad had a push cart, and the Black Hand extorted a buck a week from him for protection. Dominic uh, Valachi paid the dollar a week rather than have his produce. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.